So here we are. We're getting ready for the game against the Rams. We're joined by Jordan Rodrigue from The Athletic, newly of The Athletic in Los Angeles. Hey, thanks for doing this. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for thinking of me. I'm so excited to be on this show uh, full of some of my favorite people on this planet. So very, very excited to be here. Very high praise from you. Hey, as we get (laughs) ready for this game against the Rams, I think Bills fans are really, really nervous. I think if you would have asked them three or four weeks ago, they would have thought this game should be a win. Now they're not so sure. Rams off to a great start out there. What's been the key to their success? Yeah, the Rams were oddly underrated, I think, coming in. And, And part of that was the lack of knowledge about the new personnel. I mean, obviously suffering last year with the injuries to Todd Gurley, um, Brandon Cooks not quite fitting into the offense the way he should have. And then the offensive line was just a catastrophe in many ways uh, due to injury other than Andrew Whitworth holding it down at 38 years old on the left side. So in terms of the Rams, they came out of the gate really hot, um, you know, beat a bad Philadelphia team, beat a Cowboys team that could be decent, got to catch him on a lucky break kind of at the season opener. Um, where we didn't really know what anyone was going to be this year. So um, the Rams, I think, are are dangerous offensively, which is the most obvious statement ever because it's the Rams and Sean McVay is still Sean McVay. But they're doing a lot of things that made them really good in 2018. They're using their receivers really, really smartly and in versatile ways. They've got now all four of their receivers, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Van Jefferson, the rookie, and Josh Reynolds, who's in his third season, Uh, excuse me, in his fourth season, you know, these are all guys who can line up from anywhere on the field around Jared Goff and still be very, very effective. So it's really tough for a defense to know exactly what's coming because any of these receivers could be the quote unquote number one guy at any time. And what's a little bit different now that wasn't so much the case in 2018 was Sean McVay is using 12 personnel about 30% of the time. Um, and, and Tyler Higby and Gerald Everett are his guys in that regard. Tyler Higby last week scored three touchdowns on five touches, which is insane. I don't play fantasy football, but I assume that made some people very happy. So that was, that was something that was really his emergence last season has carried over into 2020. And then the other thing that I want to point out on offense, especially even without Todd Gurley, it's not that the Rams were going to miss Todd Gurley so much or missed him so much in 2019. What they missed was consistency at, of any kind in the run game. So much of Sean McVay's offense is predicated off of what you can do by establishing the run in general, especially that play action that Jared Goff loves to use so much. And without consistent rushing from Todd Gurley, who was hurt so much, um, it, it really, really made the offense suffer. So they have a three-headed situation happening and just like the receivers you really don't know who the lead back is going to be um, on any given week we have a little more clues this week because rookie cam makers separated some rib cartilage which is gnarly um, and he's probably going to play Sunday I don't know how many touches he would get because again that's really a painful injury um, Malcolm Brown is a broken pinky so he's going to play Sunday but again don't know how many touches that's going to get him to take And then um, Daryl Henderson kind of had his emergence in his second year last week and and played pretty well. So he probably will be the lead back this week. But again, they now have established consistency using three different guys. You don't know which one of them it's going to be. So it's, it's, it's the old Sean McVay offense, but it's a little bit of the new Sean McVay offense too. Here in Buffalo, Bills fans absolutely adore Robert Woods, and I would assume that it's probably the same out there. I know he just got his contract extension. You mentioned that it could be any receiver on any given day, but what does Robert Woods mean to that offense? Oh, he's the heartbeat. He's the absolute heart and soul uh, of this offense in so many different ways. Robert Woods, and I'm just telling Bills fans things they already know, honestly, and I love that shared connection of appreciation for this guy because he really deserves it. He's a great human being and a great football player. I think we can all agree, you know, regardless of what side you're on on Sunday, that he's probably one of the most underrated receivers in the league. And he does everything for the Rams. He works from any receiving position, they can use him in any way. They use him on reverses, um, on sweeps, which is really exciting because he runs when he runs with the ball, he runs like a fullback, which is just fantastic to watch. Um, he gets more yards after the catch statistically than any other receiver in the league. His first game, 90 of his 105 yards came after the catch, which is insane to me. Um, and, you know, he's coming off of back-to-back 1,000-yard season, so obviously a heavy, a heavy receiving target as well. 
what I think Bills fans want to watch for, and particularly what the defensive coaching staff is going to be watching for, is he's extremely effective when as a blocker and then blocking downfield. The dude blocks better than most tight ends in the league, and honestly, most offensive linemen too. So I think that they're going to use him a lot, um, not just in run blocking, but in some levels of pass protection too, as they're still kind of working through establishing uh, their offensive line. That dude is the nicest guy in the world. And then when his helmet goes on, he turns into a madman. And it is just unbelievable to watch. Josh, you mentioned Jared Goff, how successful he's been throwing out of the play action. Same thing with Josh Allen up here in Buffalo. He's been exceptional this year. He's taken a lot of strides, but this is his first real test because they should, you know, kick the crap out of the Jets and the Dolphins, quite frankly. That defense is scaring people here in Buffalo with both Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. How have they looked so far just two games into the season? Well, the rush coverage really complements each other. And and sort of um, last week you saw the Eagles throw out literally every trick that they possibly could to counter the attack of Aaron Donald and to sort of keep him off balance in terms of hard counts and quick passes and really giving Carson Wentz layup options that he didn't always see um, to try to help counter what Aaron Donald is able to do. Aaron Donald is a game wrecker and everybody knows that. So what I think you're probably going to see some similar types of things that the Bills will try to throw out. But this week, it, it's going to be, I think, really, really important, just like it was last week, for um, the inside linebackers, Micah Kaiser and Kenny Young, to play really fast and physical and contain things when they're working underneath. Contain also Josh when he tries to extend plays with his legs, which I think is a, perhaps a little bit of an underrated quality that the Rams haven't really yet seen from somebody yet. I know, you know, Dak Prescott's able to do that, but didn't really do that too much um, in week one. And then also the coverage really complements uh, what the rush does. And it, it, it also makes up for it if there's not too much of a rush. The way that the Rams are, are utilizing their defensive backs, um, it starts with Jalen Ramsey, but it goes all the way through. This is a really young group. They are fast. They are physical. They all are very, very chippy, very, very smart, very, very aggressive players. And so that's been exciting to watch from the perspective of the Rams because – they're not letting a lot of explosive plays happen and they're, they're forcing turnovers. And that's been something that's really made a difference for the Rams. Obviously Vegas thinks this game is a coin flip. The bills three point favorites they're at home. So they get the advantage there. If the bills are going to win this game, and I know you're looking at it from the opposite perspective, but do you think it'll be because the offense has success or the bills defense can shut down the Rams offense? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I don't see if the Rams come out of the gate the way that they did last week, there's not a lot you can do against what they were doing. I mean, the Eagles knew every single play they were going to run and could not do anything to stop it. Um, I think the defensive line for the bills could really be a factor here um, in terms of knocking Jared Goff off of his rhythm and out of his, his flow. That's I think going to be his first big test, but really I think this could, could very well be an offensive battle. And I know the bills defense is really, really good this year. Um, But I think this might be one of those really fun games where we get a great offensive matchup and you see whoever whoever has the ball last might be the one who wins the game. Jordan, thank you so much. It was great catching up with you and I appreciate all the insight. Thanks for having me. It was a real pleasure.